It's safe to say that Lithuania's armed forces have transformed a lot over the past 30 years since regaining independence and breaking away the USSR. I don't know the full extent of this change, but I'm sure some viewers have lived and witnessed the transformation for themselves. It was back on November 19, 1992, that the Lithuanian armed forces were officially restored. Then, in 1993, its structure was formed. However, it would take over 10 years after this for the country to become a member of the Western Military Alliance known as NATO, something that had been a goal since regaining independence. It's this journey that I wanted to examine for today's video, mainly through the eyes of the country's current Chief of Defense, General Valdemaris Rupchis. No, no, I didn't interview him personally, but he was a guest of a Lithuanian military podcast. The title of the podcast was Lietuvos Karyomene Renato Prieš Irpo, or in English, Lithuania's Military and NATO, before and after. It was all in Lithuanian, but I had some help from valued Patreon member Vaidotis in getting the whole 55-minute interview translated and transcribed. What a legend, am I right? It's a pretty long interview, and there is a lot of stuff covered, but I was particularly interested in the question, when did the Allies start to see us as equals? And then the response to this. So that's what I'll focus on. Alright, apologies for the long introduction, but let's get started. Rupchis, now the commander of the Lithuanian Armed Forces, joined the military back in November 1990. When asked if there was any thought at the time that Lithuania would one day be members of NATO, he said, No. That would probably have been naive to even think about it. And there was no reason to think about it. There were other priorities. Other tasks. NATO was not being considered, except among our young people. From an official political and historical perspective, the Lithuanian government's website says that it was on October 5th, 1993, that political parties of Lithuania addressed the president regarding the integration of Lithuania into NATO. Signed by representatives of nine political parties, the letter had this to say to the country's president. We believe that Lithuania not being integrated into a collective defense system is not safe. Therefore, it is necessary to join the Western European defense organizations together with the Central European countries to NATO. We are confident that it is necessary for Lithuania to express its desire to join at the highest level. And then, in January 1994, the president of Lithuania at the time, Algirdas Prazauskas, sent this letter to NATO's secretary general. The letter expresses the desire of Lithuania to become a NATO member, noting that there was agreement by all parliamentary parties. There was a lot of work to be done before Lithuania could be considered for NATO membership. The armed forces had to meet the requirements set by NATO, and so it was rapidly modernized. Here's one good quote that I found on the Lithuanian Armed Forces website talking about this. It was not easy for procurement specialists to gain recognition from the Allies as equal partners, since the Lithuanian Armed Forces had to start from scratch by rebuilding the destroyed infrastructure left behind by the withdrawing Soviet army in 1993. From the very beginning, the Lithuanian Armed Forces received a great amount of weaponry and equipment from the USA, Denmark, Sweden, and Germany. It's here that I would have loved to compare Lithuanian military equipment of the early and mid-1990s to how it developed leading up to and after joining NATO. But my ability to search for this stuff is a bit limited. I did, however, find a little more information from VLE.LT, the Universal Lithuanian Encyclopedia. It says that since 1994, when Lithuania started preparing to join NATO, it worked to introduce military procedures and standards similar to those of NATO countries, and so training programs were changed and weapons were updated. And since 1994, Lithuanian soldiers have been participating in international operations. In order to improve the training system of the army, the Board of Training and Doctrines was established in August 1998. From 1999 to 2002, the Gematia Motorized Infantry Brigade was established, and an Air Defense Battalion was established in 2000. Additionally, a special operations unit was officially established in 2004. The website adds that since 1992, Lithuania has been buying weapons and military equipment from other countries, including infantry weapons, communications equipment, armored personnel carriers, and light vehicles. Most of the weapons and military equipment were donated by friendly countries, primarily the Czech Republic, the United States of America, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, and Germany. The encyclopedia says that Sweden gave most of this from surplus military stocks. In 2001, the Lithuanian Armed Forces started the procedures for acquiring Javelin anti-tank missile systems, 
and in 2002, began procedures for acquiring Stinger air defense missile systems. These were further moves towards using modern, high-quality weapons. With all of this in mind, I can see from old photos provided to me by Marius that Kalashnikov rifles like the AKM were used in the 1990s. Marius also tells me that the military then went to the Swedish-made AK-4 rifle before moving to the G36 in 2003, a rifle that is still the standard today. Again, I'm sure there is a lot more in terms of equipment that I could talk about, but that'll have to be for another video. And so, on November 21st, 2002, Lithuania was invited to join NATO, and on March 29th, 2004, was officially accepted as a member of NATO. I don't know about you, but for me, it's crazy to think that it was over 20 years ago, probably because of my age and the fact that the 2000s don't actually feel like that long ago. But anyways, let's get to the big question of the video that was asked in the podcast to Lithuania's chief of defense. When did the Allies start to see us as equals? It probably wasn't like that from the very beginning. Or was it? And so here's what General Rupchis had to say on this topic. Everyone would probably say it differently here. Everyone has a different experience, a different perspective. I can emphasize one thing very strongly, the year 2004. Our units were in international missions in Afghanistan, the Balkans, and Iraq, practically operating as part of a larger unit. They were given separate tasks. This means that there was confidence in us, because otherwise, we maybe would not have been there. Individual staff members, officers, or non-commissioned officers are involved in different tasks in different headquarters. Again, there is trust and confidence in the capability in terms of meeting the standards set. I think that, since joining NATO, we have gained confidence immediately. The other thing, if you look at what has been happening in Lithuania as well, is that the Iron Wolf Brigade is involved in the Danish Division Project. That is probably 2008, 2009, 2010, and I will say in 2011, very clearly, that we were on par. I would say with others in terms of understanding, in terms of procedures, in terms of tactics, including the Danish troops. There is a very intertwined path of development between the Danish and the Lithuanian armed forces, but I would say that in 2010, 2011 and onwards, whether it was the 1st Danish Brigade, the 2nd Danish Brigade, or our Iron Wolf Brigade, they were practically equal, both officers and non-commissioned officers. In terms of technical equipment, we were given a correspondingly higher level of funding in 2016, which was the turning point. More recently came the Panzer Howitzers, the Armored Personnel Carriers, and the Vilkas Infantry Fighting Vehicles. But let us not forget that in the other forces there were ships and planes, Spartan Western aircraft, and also Western helicopters in 2011-2012. In the Air Force, there were short-range air defense systems, then medium air defense systems, so it was very clear that personnel were trained. We use the same tactics as they do. We know the procedures without being asked, we communicate, we carry out tasks together without being asked. So in practice, after joining NATO, we felt very complete. In case you don't know about the historical cooperation between Denmark and Lithuania, an old military press release says that in 2005, Litbrig was launched, one of the most important bilateral cooperation projects with Danish Defense Forces. This partnership saw troops from Lithuania's Iron Wolf Brigade connected with the Land Force Division of the Danish Army. This allowed for Iron Wolf personnel to train in large-scale, division-level exercises, training events, and joint staff work. The primary aim of the Litbrig project was to fully prepare Iron Wolf Brigade staff and personnel for full-scale NATO operations through to the end of 2014. That in itself is a fascinating topic and something that I should probably cover separately in another video. And then thinking about the commander's remarks about international deployments, particularly in Afghanistan, this video clip of a U.S. Special Forces commander speaking highly of Lithuania Special Forces also gives us a sense that allies were already seeing Lithuanian soldiers as equals in the early 2000s. I've had the great pleasure to work with Lithuanian Special Operations Forces on several occasions. I worked with them in Afghanistan when I was the commander of NATO SOF, uh, just a tremendous organization. Uh, we're very, very proud of the evolution of, of Lithuanian SOF, an organization that was formed less than 10 years ago uh, that right now is one of our most capable partners, uh, both forward uh, you know, in the combat zone where we work with them, and then certainly here with, the, with this uh, challenging mission set. And then to further reinforce this sentiment, when U.S. Army units were deployed to Lithuania in 2014 and onwards, there were some encouraging remarks from members of the U.S. Army. If you, pick a, if you take a Lithuanian soldier, you take an American soldier, uh, and put them up to the same task, it's essentially a coin flip skill-wise on who's going to complete that task better, 
faster or or win. Nonetheless, I'm sure General Rupchis is fairly biased given his position. Then at the same time, what he says makes a lot of sense. A lot of resources and training have been invested over the past few decades to bring Lithuania's military up to a NATO standard. While they don't exactly have the highest praise for the taste of some of their military rations, which is a hint about a future video, it appears to me that Lithuania's professional soldiers are seen as, and treated as, equals to other NATO allies. And I'm sure that their continued training alongside other forces during regular exercises continues to keep that standard high. And so what about you? How do you think Lithuania's armed forces compare to its NATO allies? I'm quite interested to know what you think, so leave a comment down below to share your opinion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoy this channel and want to support me in making more videos, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Members will get early access to future videos, along with some other fun little perks. There's a link to this down in the description. Thanks again for watching.